Hey, you guys. This is an easy audience. This is going to be good. Wow. That's what happens when you leave the country. Welcome to I Love Green Guide Letters, the podcast where we talk about the letters to the age, newspapers, television, and radio lift out. The Green Guide. I am Steel Saunders. And I do love those Green Guide letters! <laughs> now, normally, there's two things I hate doing on this podcast. One of them is being topical. <laughs> the other one is talking about sport. But I read this in the paper just before looking up the letters. (laughs) This was too good. I made a serious error of judgment and now I understand the consequences. It's something I'll regret for the rest of my life. Who knew the captain of the Australian cricket team was also a podcaster? (laughs) It's funny because it's sad. So good. Well, it's so good to be back in Melbourne at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. I have been on a straight diet of meat pies and fish and chips (laughs) because you can't get them in America. Someone actually, Bart, Bart Freebun said, oh, let's meet up for a burger. And I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Let's have uh, one of these shrimps on the barbie all these Americans have been telling me about. Fantastic. Um, but as you guys know, because you guys had to move, we're in a different venue. We were meant to be uh, at another venue, and we won't name the Carlton Club, but um, <laughs> we won't, yeah. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't perform there because it sounded like something related to football. So, um, <laughs> no, what happened was I got a call from the guy organising the room, and he said, oh, you better come check out this room. I don't think you're going to like it. And I went there last night and I didn't like it. <laughs> Not one bit. It was like, I don't know, if people have been in the Carlton Club, it's actually like a pretty cool place. They've got like all these, these weird, like hopefully fake animals on the wall. Um, just for my conscience, I'm going to say they're fake even though I've been eating fish and chips and meat pies all week. But, <laughs> but anyway, so the Carlton Club, like it's a pretty, you know, loud happening bar and our room was on the same level as the loud happening bar and what separated our room from the loud happening bar was one of those, you know, crazy soundproof, just sheets of cotton. Um, <laughs> They treated, like, a live podcast just like having someone's birthday there. (laughs) And we all know that a live podcast is far sadder than that. (laughs) So there we go. So now we're here. So did anyone... Did everyone... Did anyone go there and then come here? Nodding at the back? Are you feeling fit? (laughs) Are you feeling sweaty? Yeah, okay, well, you're halfway a podcast fan. Um... (laughs) The, uh, I, I bought the Green Guide today because um, I, I, I rarely get to actually see a, uh, a copy of the Green Guide and the age, I'm not sure if it's just on a Thursday or what, but it's three bucks. Three dollars. Man. <laughs> when I used to buy the Green Guide, it was less than three dollars. <laughs> I, I don't know how much it was. But three bucks, that's so fucking expensive. That's like half a big M. <laughs> and it's just crazy. So, um, I don't know, I'd be interested to know, and by interested, probably I'll never think about it ever again, <laughs> how much the Green Guy did cost when we started this podcast in 1976. Um, <laughs> must have, it was three teppence. Three teppence. Um, I, I should point out there's a... Um, I put out a, uh, a hint sheet 
for what when the guests are on and what guests. And uh, if you go to the uh, the Facebook group or the Facebook page, you can try to guess. And people, I- I'll just say this as far as bad guesses. <laughs> Whoever guessed Luke McGregor at the hint Connor McGregor. <laughs> Sweet try. <laughs> but, guys, how about we bring up our letter lovers? <laughs> One of the OGs of the game from Triple R's Breakfast is Sheldon Hickey! <laughs> A first time Green Guide lover, someone I've wanted to have on for ages. Please welcome Laura Dunneman! <laughs> And finally, all the way from Dubbo FM, it's the Snake Adam Richard! <laughs> is your mic on? Is my mic on? Yes, it is. Oh, you've got cordless ones like Whitney Houston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be an idol. Yeah. All my relevant uh, references, all dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've Much like the man you stole that beard off. <laughs> David Letterman's fine, thank you. <laughs> oh, dude, you will like Letterman if you've got the aspect ratio on your TV wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is like my life dream out of sync. <laughs> I'm like, I could just stare at you for the next hour. I really appreciate that you laughed at an aspect ratio joke. <laughs> know the room, Adam. <laughs> oh, I know this room. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Geraldine. St- Hi, Steele. <laughs> so nice to see you. It's very nice to be here. Thank you. You, um, you are my touchstone to Melbourne comedy. Like, when I see you, mm-hmm. I'm reminded how fun it is to do comedy in Melbourne. So it's so good to see you. Oh, it's lovely to... That's very that's a very kind thing to say. Thank you. <laughs> does, that, does that mean... Dude, oh, it feels like <laughs> we haven't learnt the script. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very kind thing Thanks. to say, Steele. <laughs> Thank you. Imp- <laughs> impromptu laughter. <laughs> does that mean I am the only one left in the Melbourne comedy scene that you like? He didn't say he liked you. <laughs> oh. Good one, Adam. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> no improv, man. <laughs> Shit. But I, I saw that you uh, got to perform at the gala. Oh, my fucking God. Finally. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have said that, like, that finally. But I... Went, I Dude, do not lie to me. You have been saying it to yourself in the mirror for the last two weeks. The Finally! Oh. Finally! <laughs> yeah, yeah, but also it was one of those things where I never thought it would happen. Like, obviously, when I, you know, ten years ago, I was like, oh, I'd love to do the gala. That'd be fun. Yeah, it? wouldn't yeah. that be nice? I've been doing comedy for five years. I fucking deserve it. Let me... <laughs> I love, I love how that's how a woman feels about it. If it was a man, it'd be like, I've been doing comedy for three gigs. I deserve the gala. Yeah. <laughs> and then he still has done way more than three. <laughs> but then it was, you know, obviously you get to, you know, the ten year mark or whatever, and then it's just like, oh, oh I probably won't do the gala, but oh, fuck, whatever. I don't, I don't need it. Fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> and then it gets to the next stage of oh, actually, I'm really happy with how my career's going. Everything's going really well. And, yeah, it's just great. You don't even think about the gala. And then you get the phone call. And it's like, oh, hey. So when I got the phone call, it was um, they said, oh, hi, just wanted to check your availability on something. And I went, oh, fuck, not now. Like, I don't... <laughs> not going to host another seven-hour raw fucking yeah. comedy. Yeah. <laughs> She's done her that little cunt yeah. Randy the puppet. <laughs> I have to put everything in my diary, so because I forget things all the time. So I was like, I don't have my diary on me. I'm gonna have to go home. I have to do a follow-up email. This is a lot of work. <laughs> I, can't, I can't 
can't literally be bothered minutes with it. of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I have to remember it. <laughs> I can't put it in my diary because I don't have it. <laughs> and then and then they um they said, oh, I just you know wanted to see if you're available to do the Oxfam Comedy Gala. And I went, no. And then on repeat, just kept on going, is this happening? <laughs> is this happening? So. What, what part of the theatre do you get to hold the coin collection bin? <laughs> Can I just say, though, because I saw Geraldine soon after she found out and she was sort of like, I saw her at Triple R at the radio station. She was sort of like sitting back in her chair. She's like, mate, I've got news. Like that. I was like, are you pregnant? <laughs> no, she just goes, I've got the gala. Like that. And then I, I really felt... Emotional. Yeah, you I, cried. I did. I cried. I, and then I cried because Geraldine told me that the director. You know that movie Lion. Do you guys oh, know yeah. that movie Lion? With Nicole yeah. Kidman. I'm. I'm detouring here, but this is. I haven't it, told this to anyone. It sounds like there's not enough Star Wars. In that the movie. movie <laughs> <laughs> Surely someone in Lion has been in a Star Wars film. Anyway, this isn't your Star Wars podcast. <laughs> Yes, step off, you. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that movie Lion, right? The director, Geraldine, told me, loves me. Yeah. <gasps> and then I started crying again. It was very, anyway. it was crying. Like it was, yeah. I'm happened? surprised you agreed to <laughs> oh, be okay. here. Okay, so, <laughs> where's this movie Lion from? It, it's oh, you don't know Lion? It's no. It was nominated oh. for an Oscar, Dumbo. Yeah. <laughs> It's an Australian film. It's Australian. Um, with Nicole's in it. With our Nicole. Oh, okay. <laughs> Set in Tasmania, like everything has to be at the moment. For and when oh, it's cheap, mate. <laughs> D- Diver Dan. Yeah. Nicole Kidman, yeah. the Luke McGregor of our time. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, and we interviewed him on Triple R because he's got a new film out that he's directed, Mary Magdalene, which is. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's another movie that he has directed. And <laughs> but we were very excited to have him in. That's another movie he directed! <laughs> and then but when he came, he was so excited because uh, he, you know, he lives in Melbourne. So he goes, oh, it's so great to be here. I listen to you guys every morning. And it was like, oh, cool. And he goes, and who's that... There's that, that woman that comes in on Friday for the Friday Funny Bugger. And I'm that Laura fucking Dunham woman. It's me, yeah. I do it. The Friday Funny Bugger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have one it's of those. It's a great segment. <laughs> <laughs> it's not broadcastable. <laughs> and he went, yes, I love, I love her. My kids and I, we listen to her in the car on the way to, for the school drop-off. And I think she's so funny. And, so she, and she, Geraldine told me that. And she, because I cried about that in the same way that I cried about her being in the gut. It was just tears, like just, yeah. just very, just very emotional. emotional. I'm detecting a trend. <laughs> I'm the, not very, I don't okay, cry okay, often. The, the Green Guide's $3. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cheap. What? What, the Green Guide is $3? Oh, no, doesn't the it age, come the to whole age. Yeah, right. You get a free newspaper. Can, I, can I just check? The gala has been on, hasn't it? Yeah. Because this is sometimes a very dangerous conversation. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dude, halfway through mentioning it, I'm just like, I'm halfway through the fucking sentence. I should have checked. Is that because sometimes you can get the chop? Yeah. yeah. No, she didn't get the chop. She nailed and it's, it. Can I, I, to be honest, you get a... Susan Proven will give you the phone call and it's always... Geez, you did a terrific job on the gala. You did so well. So many people saw you. Would it, it was so... Anyway, you got cut. <laughs> <laughs> and does she make it at like five o'clock on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, just as it's going to air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like there's about ten minutes left in the yeah. show. Oh, she you're doesn't... not in this. You could stop watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she does it right in the credits when everyone's on stage and she remembers. <laughs> Oh, but no, nobody got cut day. this year. Nobody got cut. Oh, because it's on the ABC. There's no commercial. Yeah, and apparently no one got Plenty cut last year. So maybe that's But also, I noticed that there wasn't any kind of non-stand-up, Oh, so you mean there wasn't an idiot from yeah, overseas doing some sort of stop. carny business? Yeah. <laughs> 
like there wasn't a stomp or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, but they so. had all those on, on the other night. Oh, last night, I think, with Ed. Yeah. She had to put up with all those articles. So we'll see who gets cut from that. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine's editing it this weekend. Who do you want out of it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I'll, I'll give him a hundred bucks if she, he can get Edo out of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll text him now and say, Cody was no good, wasn't yeah. he? <laughs> Reese Nicholson um, was out the back with this drinking wine. He was just hanging out. That's a out. surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and so when it was time for the curtain call, like he came out for it and he put a photo up on Instagram. I said, oh, yeah, sure, I was drinking wine. He wasn't doing the gala. He was just there. When it, and I, so I just wrote, just looks like you've been cut from the gala. <laughs> 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 so, so is that true that previously when there was cuts that Susan Proven herself would ring people well I know because you do it for free for because the Ox money fam, goes to Oxfam yeah. so essentially what she's telling you is like thanks for your charity work it didn't really do much <laughs> No, as far as I... Well, yeah, the, the people that I know that have been cut have had a call from Susan. That's been maybe one or two people. There's probably no yeah. nice way to do it. Like, a phone yeah. call actually probably is quite respectable. Yeah. It's better but than it's, a text. It's, it's a shit sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to be dealt. It is a tough one. And just the... Some people saw you in a room, but no one else. Yeah. <laughs> They paid a lot of money yeah. to charity. But yeah. do you reckon I'd, to look at you? Is it is it better? I'd rather not know. Just oh no, I wouldn't. Just getting. <laughs> you would rather be on Twitter going, "Why is no one mentioning me in this thing?" I feel that way when I post my the clips up for it, and no one likes it. Oh. oh. Yeah, she well, she was worried yesterday because she put it up on Facebook and no one liked it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Nate is at a million. It's fine. He's, he was really good. Do you do anything in life without consulting Laura? <laughs> <laughs> Not at the moment. We spend a lot of time with each yeah. other. We really like each other. We, we do a really little thought caddy. Yeah. yeah. A thought caddy. No, we, a what? A thought cat? Catty. Caddy. Caddy. Oh, caddy. Yeah. Like, it's, like I, I know. It, I know. It was, oh, it's I, a golfing term. Yeah, you yeah. thought it was like yeah. a pet term. Yeah. But, um, Have you not started golf yet? I thought your people had to at some point. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it was good. <laughs> Sorry, I won't mumble. <laughs> you do brekkie radio, you got not much else on. Go on, off to the golf. I... <laughs> sure, I'd love to play golf. I feel like, you know, I played... We had to go play golf in, like, year, year eight for school oh, sport yeah. once. And I was too young. I was a young teenager that was just like, whatever. Oh. Just whacking. You know, it was your nom. <laughs> 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 but we were just at a driving range, just whacking golf balls. And then someone from the golf club came up to me and was like, excuse me, are you interested in taking up golf? Because you've actually got a really good swing. Oh, hello. Oh. And I was, just, I was like 13 and going, oh, look, I want to play golf and just hit a tiny white ball and walk around. Ugh, shit. <laughs> Can you imagine how much money I'd be making? <laughs> it's like one More of the than biggest... you would have at the gala. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big regret. Anyway. You can still get into it. There's still time. Nah, I'm over it. Have you seen golfers? They smoke and drink while they're working. I don't... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she needs some added benefits. <laughs> I, there's a golf course near my house in Sydney and they're, it's like, it's inner city so it's, they're all loaded. And they have like weird robot <laughs> golf club carriers now. Like the bags are just on these wheels and they follow them <gasps> around. Oh, like, like on a, Bluetooth or something. Oh, That's like a robot crazy. vacuum. Yes! I've got cool. a robot vacuum. Hey, Her hey, name's Rhonda. It's, it's a Roomba, all right? <laughs> oh. But don't just call it by name. It's, an, a, magic, it's a magical device. There Do is this one. one. No, I don't, but I desperately would want one. Oh, no, you can't. The cat hair. It would be a disaster. My parents it would be, have it'd one. It would be full before it even got one, one leg of the room. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, the cat... Because it's not a vacuum. It's a carpet sweeper. It just fills up with shit. <laughs> but isn't they that do, good? No, they do work. No, My parents have one. Mm. Yeah, no, I've got one. 
Oh, she, you, oh, you do. She that. ate all the little tags off the bottom of the vertical can I, blinds. Can I? <laughs> Come home you know and find out halfway want? up the wall. <laughs> you know what you want? The Dyson V8 stick vacuum. It, it'll change your fucking life. Oh. <laughs> okay, this is the second time she has mentioned this vacuum in the space of an hour. <laughs> She was literally talking about it as we came down the street. Is that the long one? Or yeah, is it it's the... a stick. It's, it's just like, you, there's no cords. Yeah, my boyfriend's got like the little one. It's like Yeah, no, car. but you get a bigger one and then you, and you just, and, it's, and you just, you don't have to plug anything in, so you don't have to bend over. So... <laughs> You've lost him. <laughs> there great. Go, and also, there goes my Friday fun in my girls. <laughs> Because you, you charge it and it only lasts for like 20 minutes, so you can only do it for 20 minutes and you have to have a break. <laughs> the dream. Sounds inefficient. <laughs> no, because the cat is the reason I want it and the reason I don't want to get it. Because, so it, it just hovers around the yeah. little vacuum. And we saw a video on YouTube where all the best videos are, you guys. Yeah. And there was With a cat them. sitting on one. Oh. And then the music was like, rad and dirty. And oh, I was like, yeah. well, that's the best fucking thing ever. <laughs> I have to get one. But then I'm like, the disappointment if my fucking cat wouldn't sit on it, <laughs> it isn't worth the chance. Radio I've met your rentals. Cat. <laughs> no, I just couldn't deal. Like, if it didn't, if I got to that position where I'm like, all right, it's charged up and putting it down and then Jerry wouldn't get on it. Like, it's yeah. like arriving at Disneyland and it's closed. Oh, yeah. Have you seen I've the cats that are that. on it though? Their tails are doing that weird wiggly thing that looks like, I don't like this. <laughs> I am not into this, but there's food involved. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just sit here until they fucking finish whatever it is that they're doing. <laughs> and then when they're out of the house, I'm gonna piss on it. Would you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think like a cat. <laughs> Would you think about, um, I don't know, putting something sticky on it to... <laughs> to make it stay there? <laughs> Are you going to glue Jerry's or paws Or Velcro him. <laughs> Is that how you're getting Laura to stay there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. All right. How about we love some oh, letters? Oh, I forget that we have to do this shit. <laughs> Forget this is one of those podcasts with a point. Can I just say that um, <laughs> yesterday Laura and I got to feed an African cat. It was really cool. <laughs> like a but I can't. A I have to call an African cat. <laughs> Dude, you were looking at me so you didn't get the vision of Laura <laughs> nodding enthusiastically. <laughs> was it a large cat? <laughs> from it was big. about, um, it was bigger than a domestic cat. It was a serval, so it was like that big by... Oh, they're cute. Like about that by that. And we fed it cream cheese. Yeah. Are you so meant to feed it cream cheese? Yeah, it, it likes, likes it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Hillsville and fed a pygmy possum some peanut butter. That was Oh, fun. that's like, cute. They're tiny. They like, can hang onto your finger. Like and a could you feel its little tongue? Yes! <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> and I fed the echidnas, and their tongues like can go like around the yeah, corner. Yeah, because they get ants. Yeah, yeah. I had a handful of ants, and it was eating them. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> you, you're feeding the cat, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, now I realise why you brought it up is because we were talking about cats before. I just yeah. thought you brought that up out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laura. <laughs> well, I said check the fucking script. <laughs> But that must have been some segment in the studio, so um, <laughs> it's great. Yes, it was. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any letters? <laughs> <laughs> when do we thank our sponsors? <laughs> I think we've thanked quite a few. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's try this one. This one is titled Shooting Trump Fish. Uh. Okay. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's gonna take me take mo, a, mo, mo, me ma, ma, ma. Taking a run up. <laughs> okay. Ben Pudgy nailed it brilliantly. 
mouthing off, eight to the third. Plenty of comedians are doing Trump. It's not all who's doing Trump. (laughs) He is, after all, an easy target. But when shooting fish in a barrel, the genius is getting the fish to shoot back. Bravo. That's from Stephanie Borland in South Melbourne. And I have to just, just to alter, I just have to give a shout out to South Melbourne Market Dim Sims. <laughs> Fucking missed ya. And There's the sponsor announcement. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's a, the food court above Maya has got them and beer. Woo. It's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> Is this about the TV, though? Yes. Okay, so it's about people, comedians people. on TV. Yeah, so he's pop- watched a couple of episodes of Tonight, Lee. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But did someone, did, did he react to it? Is that what, he, is that the whole premise that, that he shot back? Does anyone know what this letter is about? <laughs> I mean, he has done. When people make fun of him, he gets angry. Like when Meryl dressed up as him, he said she was the most overrated actress in the world. You know, oh, Meryl Donald Streep. Trump. Oh, I thought yeah. you meant when Meryl dressed up as Pop G. <laughs> 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 I was like, Meryl doesn't know Pop G. <laughs> it was the part she was born to play. <laughs> if she could do it. <laughs> In preparation, she tweeted non-stop for five but years. This, <laughs> this is not in reference to when The Rock had a go at Pop G. Oh, is that it? No, uh, no, 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 no. I, I think it's about Trump. But what I want to know, this, mm-hmm. this is this is my uh, topic out of this. Have you guys ever, like, joked or tweeted about a public figure and they have shot back? And by you guys, I mean Adam Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes to my face. <laughs> While I've been saying it. <laughs> uh, once I wrote a letter in... Well, not a letter. I wrote an article for The Green Guide when I used to do stuff for them once upon a time. No, I actually do think a lot of the letter writers do think they're writing articles. <laughs> <laughs> no, then I got paid. Uh, <laughs> and it was about um, Battle of the Choirs or something. It was some shit show with Kochi. And... Uh, Koshi, do you mean? Yeah. Okay. I've just... <laughs> I've been watching videos of when Kath and Kim were on Ko- Koshi. <laughs> and like, when they went on, they both insisted on calling him Kochi, and he would not correct them. And the more, the more he just kept glossing over it, the more they kept doing it. Is, oh, Kochi, you don't understand. My daughter, she's very difficult. Is, <laughs> is Koshi not Australia's, like, dumb cunt uncle? Yeah. That's what I said in this article. <laughs> Maybe he didn't use those words. I said he was like, I said he was doing all the jokes that your annoying uncle does at a wedding. And yeah, it was like Charlie from High Five. Anyway, the, it was basically choirs competing with each other, and I maybe with knives. <laughs> no, just vocally. Oh, okay. Like Channel Seven had seen an episode of Glee and went, "Oh, let's do that." Um, <laughs> it was a while ago, and I maybe said in the article that, judging by the people on this show that choirs is where ugly people went so they weren't alone. (laughs) (laughs) You are mean. (laughs) Do you know what? You didn't see those pogs. One day, (laughs) if you keep saying things like that, one day you might end up in a choir all on your own. (laughs) Yeah, that's called being a soloist. I'd be good at that. Mariah's in a <laughs> choir all on her own. She <laughs> is. She's very good. Um, but anyway, they wrote several very tersely worded letters in the ensuing weeks. <laughs> Who did? Koshi did. No, no, no. Koshi all didn't the care. Choir members. The ugly choir people. <laughs> so, because I, I... Hey, hey, sorry. They weren't ugly. The aspect ratio was... <laughs> One thing people get upset about, like fucking even Husey got upset about being called ugly this week. It's because oh. he got called ugly on Gogglebox. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, well, poor thing. Ah, <laughs> oh, I know. With all his millions of dollars, you'd yeah. think he'd do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine Husey one day turned up looking like Kim Kardashian <laughs> <laughs> or Sam Newman. <laughs> Man, he's my least favourite cat. Uh, <laughs> very weird. But Koshi on... I didn't see when Kath Kochi. and Kim were on Koshi or whatever that fucking show it was, was called. It was, Mel was still there. It was a while ago. Oh, okay. 
Um, I would imagine he's the sort of dude that just before they went on worked out that they were characters. <laughs> And then was like making a big point of like pointing out that, you, like, <laughs> how have you guys been? Oh, wink, wink. <laughs> but oh, his mum and dad watch it because it's on. They <laughs> no, they're convinced that this fucking cow's gonna ring up and give them some money. Oh no, the cash cow. Oh man, I I was sitting at the t- next table at the Logies over from the cash cow. <laughs> what? In costume or out of costume? It was in costume. Uh, Eating a steak, it was weird. (laughs) (laughs) I need some milk for this coffee. (laughs) No, no, I'll have it black. (laughs) So, is is it known... Is the cash cow, like, played by one person or is there multiple people, like, under the black and white? I have no idea. I don't want to know. (laughs) It's the same guy that was Pluck a Duck. <laughs> <laughs> and Marty Monster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. Have you guys ever, have you, have you ever, ever had a sledge? Ever a, been in a costume? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, who did you have to be in costume? I was a, when I was working in a bowling alley. Yes. And it was open like 24 hours and I'd get bored. <laughs> <laughs> And you had to dress as someone that didn't want to no, cut I themselves. No, I just didn't. I, I just knew there was a costume out the back, so I'd liven the night up a bit, and then go put on a, a pin, like a you know tent, like a the like a giant pin, pin uh-huh. with yeah. big eyes. Yeah, and I come out in that. <laughs> it's Pinzo. <laughs> yeah, and it was funny because people were on pingers at the time. <laughs> And they because it was like it'd be two o'clock in the morning in, in the casino, and they're just going, "Why the fuck is <laughs> it, someone dressed in this big novelty pin?" And then I'd go behind the bar and like go, "What do you want?" And serve, <laughs> serve them beers. Except it was so big that I couldn't quite reach around <laughs> to, to pull the to pull the beers. But anyway, the end. <laughs> I once had to host the red carpet for. An Amanda Bynes film. She's the man? Yeah, that was the one. It's a great movie. <laughs> and it was... <laughs> it was at the... <laughs> I probably hadn't said anything for five minutes. <laughs> it was at the high-class <laughs> venue. <laughs> Such joyous knowledge. <laughs> It's a good, it was, was it a good... I never saw it's it. It's a great movie. <laughs> it was at the <laughs> high-class movie. movie venue that we all know, Southland. And... Uh, <laughs> so I'm like... That is, oh. a, that, is, that is a long limo ride. Oh. For anyone that doesn't know Southland, that doesn't live in Melbourne, it's an amazing shopping centre because one part of it is on one side of the freeway and the other side of it is on the other side of the freeway and then part of the shopping centre goes over the freeway like yeah. a bridge. Yeah, you can, you can literally... It's amazing. <laughs> you can buy shit on top of cars. It yeah. is an architectural wonder. They talk about the Eiffel Tower and the Empire State <laughs> Building. Get yourself to Southland. <laughs> it is amazing, although... If you are at one side of Southland and it's after hours and they close the shopping centre, then it's hard to get your car back from the other <laughs> side. <laughs> anyway, um, so Amanda Bynes was turning up and I had to host this red carpet going, oh, everyone, uh, huge red carpet, all celebs will be coming. No, no, just Amanda. And, <laughs> and so because they were desperate for people to look like they were interesting and on the red carpet, they, they made all the poor people that worked at this, this village cinema dress up in there was a giant popcorn mm-hmm. and a big choc top Aww. and a big coke which, which would you choose to be out of the three i probably would have been the popcorn because it looked like the roomier costume yes <laughs> but i was like because i was bored and like i'm just kind of going oh yes as you can see coming down the red carpet now we've got popcorn <laughs> and choc top Oh, look out, here comes Coca-Cola. I don't know if you know this, people, but Coca-Cola and Choc Top have been seen kissing <laughs> in the cupboard just before. Oh, my God, there's going to be a fight. Like, oh, they're going to make a little spider. <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> I was 
so boring. And then Amanda Bynes turned up and you could see the look on her face like, oh. Didn't she? <laughs> Where'd you say that Coke was again? <laughs> yeah. Did she? What, something went wrong with she's her. She's had some problems. Oh, she's she had went some to fucking Southland. <laughs> <laughs> it all she's started at She's never been the same since. <laughs> It would have been pre-bridge, though, I think. Oh, no, no, the bridge was no, there. No, the bridge oh. has been there from the start. Yeah. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. It jumped no? the freeway one day. It jumped the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, trying to get, it's trying to get to Chad's. It's trying to get to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually would just like to acknowledge how impassioned I got to confirm that Southland was on one side. Yeah, that was, <laughs> You're like, I, no, was, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it couldn't go the other way for some reason and that went, fuck it, I'm going over the freeway. It's, yeah. That is, whoever has thought of doing that is somebody that thinks outside the box. Yeah. Or outside that's the an, freeway. Th- that's an innovative <laughs> thinker, at, at, the, at the very least. <laughs> Do you think like the first couple of times they tried to build over it, like like people died and they went, no, yeah. it's too far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would have been a pretty amazing and emotional day when they finally like met. It would have been middle. like the Great Escape, you know that movie when he pops his head out of the hole. They've been digging the tunnel for months, and then he pops his head out of the pole out of the hole, and it's work. That's what it would have been like. They would have like they would have like like made this. Southland, <laughs> and then like they put the last bit of brick or whatever, and then two construction workers just reach out and touch each other's hands and they, <laughs> and they cry. And like for months on end, their wives have like not known if they're coming home tonight. <laughs> and finally, From the, shops. the start it's over. But you reckon once across the um, the road, they call it South and Northland. Well, I wonder if no, there a, is a Northland in Well, there would be a south side of Southland. <laughs> is there rival gangs? Yeah. <laughs> like Bloods and what, what's the other one? Crips. Crips. I'm going to cut you LA outside now. Minimax. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like the Kmarts and the big Ws. <laughs> yeah. And they meet at Boost Juice. <laughs> For a showdown. <laughs> Speaking of Kath and Kim, they used to film Fountain Gate at Southland. Yes. For the yeah, first year, then it wasn't they went, actually Fountain what? Gate. No, then they went to actual Fountain Gate for the last oh, season. So I picked up on that too. They called it Fountain Gate, but it was at Southland. <laughs> so like, oh, we don't want to go outside Brighton. <laughs> Auntie has lied to me yet again. <laughs> Fuck that shit. That would be. That would have been so annoying. They must be Green Guide letters, like going, "You say you're at Fountain Gate, but I know that food court anywhere." <laughs> <laughs> that is Southland Alibaba's. <laughs> If you know, Alibaba went... started in Canberra. Oh. <laughs> I know. Someone clever there too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there like this, there's some, um, I think Marion or something in Adelaide, it's like the franchise. Oh, Westfield Marion. Yeah, it's like the demographic of people that go to that mall fits Australia, so they test all franchises in that mall. So that's where they are. So if you fail it there, you can. You're not going to be. You're not going to make it anywhere. Or if you, yeah. But if you fail there, no one fucking hears about it. Yeah. Because it's at the Marion Mall. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty sweet. Yeah. So there's a lot of one-hit wonders at the Marion Mall. (laughs) Yes, but big successes. Although. Anyone who's ever done a show in Adelaide knows the people there have no fucking idea what they like. <laughs> that is a bad place to test things. Anyone in from Adelaide? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> they wouldn't be sensible enough to go to Melbourne. <laughs> I like that anywhere from Adelaide, that guy just found that hilarious. <laughs> would come here from Adelaide. <laughs> All right. Hi, James Fosdyke. Hope you're well. <laughs> Uh, how about this one? More of Manu. Oh, oh I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Manu. Oh, didn't look at this surname. <laughs> <laughs> Give it your best shot. All right. <laughs> Clearly, Manu Smith. His surname is from MKR. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, 
Manu MKR is completely <laughs> at ease in his latest venture, Manu's American Road Trip. Seven. His whirlwind tour of America's deep south embraces everything from the art of biscuit making to catching catfish. And incidentally, he shows that he can cook. His infectious enthusiasm knows no bounds. And I look forward to the next episodes. And that is from one of our favourite letter writers, Helen Scheller of (laughs) Benella. (laughs) <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Shout out to Helen. That's great. And yes, to answer what you're thinking, I did just read that one out because her name rhymes. So. <laughs> but it also was very pointless. She just describes the show yes. and says she'll watch it again. Is this that is, a, no, like, but this is the thing, Laura. This is what about they, they think they write articles. Yeah. Helen Scholler from Benella is gagging to write those. You know how there's like the pics of the week above the TV guide? Yeah. Yeah. Shella thinks she's oh, like... Oh, she, she angling. Yeah. She's trying to get in. Like she's trying to like... She thinks she's like interning. Well, in she, needs to, <laughs> she needs to drive down the Hume, come to Melbourne for some meet and greets. <laughs> <laughs> Do some networking. <laughs> Nothing's happening out in Benalla, Helen. She needs the peace and quiet to work on her letters. <laughs> yeah. so she, she legit writes every week. At least you could pop into Violet Town and have a word to Ella Hooper. Like, that's just down the road from Benalla. Yeah. The, um, this is... Uh, I, I, I sort of... I had heard Manu. I knew like they were involved in some sort of reality television. Yes, the and cooking I, I, one. I had a hint of that food was involved. And I literally, about an hour and a half ago, had this thought in my head. Oh, okay. I haven't seen what this show is. So I'm going to Google who she is. Oh, you thought Manu was a girl? Yes. Oh, no. No. How very progressive of you. (laughs) (laughs) What about Manu? What about it made you think it was a woman? Cooking. How unprogressive of you. You sexist piece of shit. In the kitchen where she belongs. (laughs) You dog. (laughs) You dirty, sexist dog. I don't know, I just... Manu, it just sounded like a lady's name. Manu's accent has gotten thicker. Yeah, he would put it on. Like, he used to be comprehensible for a while. And now, he like, when they go to Can you do a French accent? Try it. I can do Manu. <laughs> yeah, do Manu, do he Manu. Goes, he goes, okay, pineapple teat. I think he's mean? saying bon appetit. <laughs> but it sounds like pineapple teat. Oh, yeah, <laughs> pineapple teat. And then he goes, he loves dessert. He gets so excited about dessert. He goes, oh, this is amazing. I love ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream is amazing. <laughs> Like, I like ice cream too, mate. <laughs> sure, it will change your aspect ratio, but it's worth it. <laughs> He's you, gotten fatter too. <laughs> do you know also, the guy that Manu does MKR with, he's crazy. He's oh, the crazy Pete one. Oh, Pete Evans. Can you do his accent? Oh, I'm, I do the paleo diet and I'm <laughs> Pete Evans. And you all, if you don't eat, if you eat anything packaged, then you're going to die. Also, also sunscreen. <laughs> and don't use sunscreen. And don't get your kids vaccinated. <laughs> I, I love you that your impersonation is stating who you are. <laughs> this do you is, wanna... I'll do your Ronnie Chang impression. I'm Ronnie Chang. <laughs> can I show you my, basically my only two impersonations that I can do? Oh, please. Right? Hello, I'm Felicity Jones from that movie, The Theory of Everything, and Star Wars Rogue One. (laughs) (laughs) And then... Don't, hey. (laughs) Don't fucking stop. Don't fucking step to our Felicity. I'm Felicity Jones. The country of Star Wars. Is very proud of her? (laughs) What did you think of that story? movie, Rogue One. <laughs> I was so I, happy to be cast in that role. Uh, can, can you please do your Princess Diana uh, impersonation now? Hello, I'm Princess Diana. <laughs> I died in a car crash. <laughs> no, OK, 
Okay, here's my other one. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> here's my other one, ready? I'm Jason Statham. I play the same character in every single movie I'm in. I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> So I really, I knew that was him because you said it twice. It's just, a f- <laughs> <laughs> it's just a female male version of the same person. <laughs> My partner really likes that when I do it around the house. Can you do an impression of him? <laughs> I'm Laura's boyfriend, ain't I? <laughs> gonna go do the washing because I'm a domestic god. (laughs) (laughs) So I can only do two. (laughs) You're amazing. And we all know you do an amazing David Letterman. What about you? Do you have an impression? Nah. 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 Go on. You've got one in you. I'm fucking Geraldine Hickey and that's all. (laughs) Oh, that's what I wanted to know when you did the... um, when you did the gala, mm. did you? Did do I do? Did I do sup fuckers? No, no? I, the oh, first the first joke that is. I pretty didn't. Good. Did you? No. No, that would have been yeah. The, the first <laughs> joke I ever saw you do was you wa- you got on stage and you just grabbed the dude in the front row's beer, oh, yes. sculled oh. it, and then put it down. <laughs> And I was like, this is one of the best comedians I've ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) Can't wait till she talks. He was so pissed off. (laughs) (laughs) But it was so fun to do because these guys would get so shitty that someone had taken their beer. But then they wouldn't have time to be shitty because they'd just be so impressed that I (laughs) could (laughs) scold it. Hickey and I once had to host Raw Comedy together. Oh, fuck, it was good. And we, 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 we just talked a little bit at the start and then introduced the first act and then ordered some Palmers. <laughs> and then pretty much whoever didn't have a mouthful had to announce the next <laughs> act. <laughs> we just sat in the front row going, and the next act is... <laughs> you want one, some asshole. Yeah. Really fun. You were good. eating in the front row. Yeah. Well, yeah. while introducing the act. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're very skilled at our jobs. <laughs> Professionalism. <laughs> Professionalism. Um, all right. What about this one, Adam? You might have uh, an interesting take on this. Mm-hmm. Getting the message. I hope you are forwarding all the letters regarding the displeasure about the current format of ABC Breakfast to ABC Melbourne. (laughs) It's now podcast all the way to work in the mornings. I wonder when the ABC will listen to the messages from their loyal listeners. And that is from Kathy Evans to learn Vale. Tullernvale? Is that Tool, a ma- maybe Tullernvale? Oh, okay, nice. No. Is that know. a real place? I don't, well, she lives there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, like Caroline Springs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not its real name. Its real name is the Swamp Before Werribee. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Is, it, is that where know. it is? Anyway. <laughs> Um, do you think they are folding the letters? Or are they just printing them and then hopefully someone from the ABC will watch? Is she expecting watch? Green Guide letters to do the ABC's admin? <laughs> is that what she's wanting? Yeah. That's unrealistic <laughs> and unreasonable. Well, if she really hates um, the show, she should ring up and tell Sammy Shah on air. Like, that would be the easy way to do it. So, what, what's the, what, is, is this a, a, a problem that's sweeping Melbourne? People uh, are, what, what's, so what's the issue, Red Adam? Simons left and got said... The, got the gong. He, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they replaced him with uh, Jacinta and Sammy and, you know, ABC listeners are very strange. Rather than change stations and go, oh, what else is on? They'd just go, oh, this is awful and I hate it. I've been listening to this every day and hating it every single day. I'm going to write to the green guy. 
It's interesting the the expectation that some yeah it's radio and TV but yeah listeners and viewers have about stuff. And I think with, with you'd have a lot to say about this, but you probably can't <laughs> talk about. But you've got, <laughs> you've got subscribers, <laughs> and they feel invested. It's like I've paid for yes. this fucking station. Hire someone else. Yeah, <laughs> and it's typical of the ABC. I pay my eleven oh. cents. Do you know yeah. apparently it's now only like four cents? Yeah. Well, still, <laughs> I I bloody put it in, and also like. Who is who is Kathy? Do you know what? She's an old white lady. Move on. <laughs> like loyal, like this whole, you know. I wonder when the ABC will listen to the message of, from their loyal listeners. The loyal listeners are old and out of date. Move on. We've got to get new <laughs> yeah. listeners in. New blood. No. She Die, Kathy. Fred Simons was shit at his job. <laughs> she needs to. <laughs> Oh, wait, what is she... Was she no, being no, nice? But, no, 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 but, like, she needs a dictionary because she just says, it's now podcasts all the way to work in the mornings. I wonder when the ABC will listen to the messages from their loyal listeners. Loyalty yeah. is about sticking yeah. with her. Yeah. yeah. And well, she's unless a fair she's... weather. That's what I'm saying. She should ring up and say, this is shit. <laughs> like, pretend you're, you're calling up about something else. Like... <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, no, I, I, my, my daughter also has uh, whatever you're talking about. And, uh, and then they go, oh, this is, this is, this is what's her name? Uh, Kathy. Kathy Evans. Kathy, oh, so you think, you think an on-air switcheroo. Yeah, this is yeah. Kathy. You are terrible. I hate you. Bring that grand <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done, like, a, a, a callback form of radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm. all radio is callback. <laughs> is it really scary? No. You we just, do it. You we can d- hang up on them. <laughs> yeah. You could fade them down when they're swearing. It's fun. But yeah, we do it sometimes on um, on Triple R. But we don't have the luxury of a producer. Oh. There's no filter system, so we see. It's just whoever is there. We see the, you know, the phones light up, and we go, "Should we? Yeah, let's <laughs> take Hello. this on air." And most of the time, it's good. It's the only time it's shit is when they go. Uh, hello, I'm just looking for someone in the office. I'm like, oh, no, you're on air, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> nah, dude, their new album's pretty good. Yeah. The worst thing about commercial radio is like nine times out of ten, it's like, <gasps> can I get a chair of tickets? No, no, we want people to ring up if they've ever had a callus on their private parts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if I say I have one, can I have get chair of tickets? <laughs> It's, it's not to broadcast. I just want to know what to do. <laughs> it's um, weird. But it sounds like you're getting good feedback on your segment and that's all that matters. Well, yeah. from the one person... From a, from a Hollywood director yeah. who's made a good movie and another movie. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope he doesn't listen to this. I think you'll be safe. <laughs> <laughs> he just listens to Friday Funny Buckets. Yeah. All right. Here's one more about this whole, uh, this whole affair down at the ABC <laughs> with our dollars. <laughs> but I have to see those people in the morning. I think Sammy and Jacinta are doing a terrific job. Yeah, I'd like to well say that as them. well. Yeah. I haven't listened. I would have no idea. <laughs> and it, was I mean, a, it would be a hard job to... Oh, getting up at fuck o'clock in the morning to talk to yeah. assholes. Yeah. And at the ABC with it, I've got no money. The only person who's got it worse is Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> Dodged a bullet there. Um, no longer seeing Red. Oh. Which is an ironic title because he was on the radio. Yes. Mm. So. <laughs> no one was ever maybe seeing him. Maybe it's a letter to bring back Hey Hey It's Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't bring that back. <laughs> you don't want to see a man with his hand up an ostrich's ass anymore? <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> see that any day. <laughs> Except ostriches lay their own eggs, so there's no real need unless they have some kind of infection to put your hand up there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Factual. <laughs> wow. Too soon. And by too soon, I mean... Never. Probably never, yeah. <laughs> 
this, this, this boycott of the ABC, it's spreading. Glory Bradley! Letters, first to the third, is right! It is bigger than red! I no longer listen to that station and have also changed TV channels! <gasps> <laughs> no, it gets worse. Oh my god. At prime time! <laughs> Man, I do that a lot. <laughs> I'm watching the project more often than the ABC News, and I love Ian Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where things get sexy. I have been reacquainted. With the charms of Waleed Ali. The golden oh boy. <laughs> and that sexy piece is from Ingrid Roger in Williamstown. You brought her, you Roger. Oh, sorry. That's funny because I know someone called Ingrid Rogers. Oh, But she would never write a letter like that. What, sort of, what sort of things would your Ingrid Rogers she's not complain at home about flicking herself off over Waleed. <laughs> no, she's a lovely lady. She would she'd write about good recipes for kids' lunches and stuff like that. So <laughs> And Waleed's throbbing member. She might think about that. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Ingrid. <laughs> don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. But it does seem like, um, yeah, Waleed made a project of her body at some point in the time. <laughs> in and her he got carried away with it. <laughs> he's, he's and and, and pun, if I could remember the new girl that got hired from the other Lisa, channel. Lisa Wilkinson. Well. <laughs> at okay, least uh, um, everything turned out okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you just cut this bit out? <laughs> no, this is gold. We're in, I think we're almost into the witching hour. Yeah, it's t- two past twelve. Oh, have you gone crazy? Yeah. You go a little bit. <laughs> when I go local. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to stare. I've never had a guest turn into a pumpkin before. So <laughs> I'm, I'm well, I did re- say I was only going to have a couple of sips of my beer and then give it to you, so I'll just... <sighs> Oh, thanks, mate. It's too that. heavy for her. <laughs> oh, because, yeah, so we, this is an insight into uh, show business, you guys, and I'm, I'm sure that's what you came for. Um, so, doing the show here, we were, we were issued with one compliment, complimentary beer each. Very right? exciting. Yeah, so, like, we, all, we went over to the counter to get our complimentary beer. Counter. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the bar. It's the bar. <laughs> He's been in America one week too long. <laughs> I went to the counter. (laughs) So where do you go to order at McDonald's in Australia? To the lady. (laughs) You're the fucking sexist one on the panel. Yeah, that's bad. There's mostly ladies in there. The the boys are doing the cooking. (laughs) At McDonald's. I can't even. Seriously. Oh, did you say lady? Yeah, the lady. I thought, I thought you said lane. Like, <laughs> the lane. <laughs> and like, you were going to get into your pin suit again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought like you meant like the driving lane. <laughs> like you order in your car, you go down there. You never, you never want a man manning the register. Like, have you ever been, seen, been to a supermarket and there's a man on the, the buzzy thing? <laughs> And it's like there's a queue out the door while he goes. Uh, so women are more like, m- women are more efficient. Yeah, they're like fucking get out of my shop. <laughs> <laughs> so you have shit to do. <laughs> you must be really self-loathing at the self-checkout. Oh, that's why I go to Aldi. Oh, they are. Because f- they're sitting down and I can look down on them. I'm scared. I'm <laughs> scared of the checkout at Aldi. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're brusque. <laughs> I don't like it how you have to put everything in the bag because yeah. you realise that oh, that's me. actually kind of... Hard. I get, like, nervous. <laughs> and it's like, this, it's too much. I shouldn't I have got like so much cheap I've chocolate. crushed the fruit I loaf. just feel like every, everything's in a rush. Like, get out! Get your bag! Get your stuff in the bag! Quick! <laughs> Do you know why they're in don't, a rush? Because they've got a queue of people who've bought stuff from the middle aisle and they're returning it because it's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great place. Great people. <laughs> great people. 
fuck, you totally derail. I don't know. Are you talking about the beer? Oh, but yes, it's not yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so he there went was, to the counter. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. <laughs> Yeah, let's get back to that. So when you go to McDonald's, when you go up to the, to, to the woman, now fuck your screen. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to talk to the lady anymore. You just press the buttons on a screen and it gives you a receipt and then she turns up with a bag. All right, just say the screen's not fucking working that day, right? And you don't have a car and they've got the little, I'm just going to cover everything. There's the little sign that says no people allowed to walk through the drive through you fucking idiots. <laughs> Where is the the woman or man? Where are they standing where you go? At the cash register. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is anyone with me? No. No one knows where you are. <laughs> no one calls it a counter. Because alcohol is a bar. It's a bar. Yeah. Hey, do you fucking talk back at the cinema, cunt? <laughs> you know, I've been to the cinema with them. They do. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking counter. Please thank our guest, Adam Richard. <laughs> Laura Donovan and Geraldine Hickey. He never finished the beer story. <laughs> Hey, Thank if anyone wants to hear it, I'll fucking be telling the rest of it over at the counter, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Still. I've had a lovely time. <laughs> this has been a great night, Still. You've got beautiful eyes. <laughs> and I'm Felicity Jones from the Fury of Everything. The Star Wars Rogue One. <laughs> which I listen to every day, like a sad creature. Is that, is that a... It's a British rural soap opera that's been running since the 50s. <laughs> on the radio. It's the best. <laughs> Isn't it good? It's so good. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, she was... Um, I'm now considering she was anything Grundy that doesn't agree with me a heckle. I'm just like, shut the fuck up. She was Emma Grundy for a while. <laughs> and her mum, Susan, is the best. Hello, Susan. I'm your daughter, Felicity Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone has to go home. I could do it forever. <laughs> Can you do ET? I've never seen that movie, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> the person in ET was British. Hello, I'm ET. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an alien. <laughs> I've come down from outer space. Can you do Michael Payne? I'm going to mess with all of you. <laughs> so you better watch out. It's good. It's better if you haven't seen it. Cause then you can... <laughs> I haven't seen it. I feel like I'm in it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I am Steel Saunders and I do love those Green Guy letters! Hey guys, thanks so much for watching our live I Love Green Guide Letters podcast at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. We have got four more episodes from that festival to upload, so to not miss one, hit subscribe, which is just here, and then hit the little bell button, which will give you a notification once that has uploaded. And also, right now, there's all little links here. For audio, I Love Gringo Letters podcast, which there are hundreds of, and some videos from my other podcast, Steel Wars. Click them all. They're fantastic. They're there for you to click. Click them. Click. Thanks. <laughs>